Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of the LLG vlog. And I'm Deborah Evans, Chief Executive of LLG. And joining me today is Dennis Hall, LLG Bulletin Editor. Hello once again, Deborah. Uh, nice to see you again, Dennis. Nice and to uh, today we thought we'd talk about the general election 2024. Now, why you may think, because we're nearly in December, but the long and the short of it is a really interesting report has just been produced that really shines a light on some of the things that have gone well in that election, but also some of the things that have gone less well. And just to give a quick overview, and I know Dennis will give more flavour on this, um, that the long and the short of it was that the majority of things in the election went really, really well. And a lot of people were able to cast their vote effectively without issues. So there's no doubt that the election was a success. But there were some issues around postal voting, for example, and overseas voting. And in particular, there were some very significant issues around candidate abuse, with over half of the candidates taking part in the election reporting issues of abuse. And sadly, that was particularly prevalent um, within um, female and ethnic minority candidate uh, bases. So, um, Dennis, tell us a bit more on this then, please. Well, you know, Deborah, this was a report in two parts. There were the pluses, as you've mentioned, that uh, the vast majority of people who were involved in this election were very confident about the business of voting. They were quite happy about that. But we now recognize with this particular report, it's an important report based on a lot of research, but abuse and intimidation, not only of candidates, but also of electoral uh, officers, is a feature now of our uh, elections in this country. And why it's remarkable, I think, is for two reasons, and, and it's these. This was the election when we anticipated that there would be difficulties and steps were put in place for greater coordination and contact with the police. Uh, the recognition that there needs to be a greater involvement of uh, uh, electoral, uh, the uh, election party, the parties involved in the election, they should be involved in uh, ensuring standards amongst their candidates. So a number of measures were in place, but we still had a large amount of uh, abuse and intimidation. And more than that, that made the level of abuse remarkable in this case that the report refers to, and it's this. This was not a finely balanced uh, election. It wasn't like Trump and Harris, was it? Generally speaking, the, the result of this election was very, pretty much anticipated, Deborah. So tell me, Dennis, do you think that social media has caused a particular problem here? Well, I wish that only social media were the case, because when you look at the results of the research that this report is based upon, they make reference to other forms of intimidation as well. And you may remember that the Justice Secretary, Shabana Mahmood, who, uh, who made a number of points about her supporters who faced intimidation. And this was during the campaign. And it stopped the kind of things that used to be a feature of our elections, door knocking and canvassing. These things are much less likely to be done by people from an ethnic background or from indeed uh, women. Uh, why should they be prevented from doing these things that the normal course of events should normally take place in an election? Mm, it's it's quite sad, really, isn't it, Dennis, that these these barriers get in the, the way um, so that presumably the report has come up with some recommendations as to how to improve things. Um, and we're also aware, for example, because we, we've been working with the LGA on their debate, not hate campaign for some time now. So there's, there's lots of individual organisations trying to change this as well. But what are the main recommendations that have come out of the report? Well, I think there were four, and you, um, there's been mention of the Speaker's Conference. The Commission support the Speaker's Conference t taking a role in all of this. And perhaps I should say a Speaker's Conference is an ad hoc cross-party group of MPs brought together by the common Speaker to discuss specific topics. It's rarely done, but elections is, is a topic that has been chosen in this instance for all the reasons that we've discussed. So that's going to look at the elections in a much wider uh, perspective. And second, I mentioned the role of the police. Now, this was already thought to be something that had been uh, put in place, but police forces and prosecutors are, should, should continue to treat allegations of cases involving electoral-related intimidation 
they're asked by the report to treat these very seriously and that those committing offences against candidates and campaigns campaigners should face significant sanction. And back to political parties, the report says uh, political parties should ensure that membership uh, rules emphasise respect for other campaigners and that parties should take appropriate action to sanction members found to have used or harassed campaigners. And finally, back to the point that you mentioned, social media and online platforms should help develop improved screening tools for candidates' digital profiles so that they can remove the abuse uh, content and identify perpetrators. I think that's one of the biggest uh, matters that could be addressed, and the report recognises this. Well, I think it's it's fair to um, give a nod to the fact that um, the riots earlier in this year um, were also put down to social re uh, media, literally um, spreading hate in a millisecond um, and encouraging mass action. And, and presumably social media could easily be used in a very similar way in a, an electoral format. We'll all remember the storming of the White House. Oh, yeah. but fortunately, nothing similar has happened over here. Um, but there is a real need for control and standards there, I think. Um, yeah. But also at the start, we talked about postal voting um, and overseas voting. Is there anything that they've recommended to improve that sort of area? Well, yes, the, the report uses this term, what, what's needed to be done so that voting can take place easily and securely. And the report identifies three things. First, revising the deadline for applications for postal votes and introducing more voting options for those who do not receive theirs uh, on time. And second, reforming how overseas voters receive ballot papers and testing options such as voting in embassies and consulates, for example. And finally, expanding the list of ID accepted at polling stations, such as the Job Centre Plus travel discount card and the 18 plus student Oyster photo card and other digital forms of ID. So those were the range of things that they were looking at mm. on the matters of detail that the, the Electoral Commission was looking at. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that voter ID never turned out to be the big issue that people thought it no. might be and that that actually went fairly well. Um, and, and obviously a, a lot of voters have high confidence in our electoral system and, and were able to vote successfully, um, which is excellent. So um, the, there are some tweaks to be done here to improve the situation. And I know um, we've got, uh, is it uh, 2026 that we've got Welsh elections coming and uh, Scotland as well. So, yes. um, and obviously, uh, you know, the, the future there'll be another UK general election. So we're, we're always on a road of continuous improvement, really. Um, well, uh, yes, yes, I, I'm sure you want to mention the fact that we do have local elections. Well, on yes, a, I was going to... an annual basis in local government. So, um, what do you think is going to be done before the next round of local elections? Well, I think that's the difficulty. I, I mean, Vijay Rangarajan, the chief executive of the Electoral Commission. Uh, sees that there is now an, a window of opportunity to make these amendments and, and improvements that he mentions in the report ahead of the 2026 Welsh and Scottish elections that you mentioned. But bear in mind, the local elections in May 2025 will involve 21 county councils and nine unitary councils and one metropolitan borough. So I, I, I think that uh, there's not a lot of time to get new measures into place to deal with some of the issues that we've discussed mm. and that are mentioned in the report uh, itself. Um, one of the other topics, if I can mention, and I've got to bring in the uh, Association of Electoral uh, Administrators, Peter Stanion, of course, has been a regular uh, speaker, Deborah, at our conferences. And he mentions a number of points because the report does discuss the introduction of digital forms of uh, voting, something they're not in favour of. They're very wary of going in that direction. And I, I remember a joke that he made at one of the uh, uh, conferences he had attended when he was asked, well, surely digital will bring in, a, it will almost guarantee a 100% turnout. But he said what he's worried about is that there'll be a 110% turnout. In other words, that there will be manipulation of digital measures. So he is cool on the on that part of the uh, latest report that talks about digitization. But he also makes some very important points. And the fact that so much has been done to affect the work of electoral officers over recent years. And he's very concerned at the pace at which new things have been introduced. And he's highly critical 
of the Elections Act measures that were introduced by the last government. Um, he said these overshadowed the issues around voter ID. And he says election teams have worked really hard to put all these uh, legislative changes into place. Um, so he would welcome a review of the registration process. He would welcome a simplified, modernized and consolidated election law, perhaps in one piece of legislation. Uh, he does feel that there's much to do to simplify things and not overburden uh, electoral officers, many of whom will be our, our members, of course, with additional legislation. But clearly the government and this report uh, presage a number of changes and new things coming forward soon, Deborah. Mm. Yeah, and, and I can understand his concern with respect to the digitization. I mean, it, it does obviously feel like the next step, um, but uh, voter fraud, family voting, all of those yes. types of known issues can really perpetuate in cyberspace. It's, it's far easier to do that sort of thing. So um, the controls would need to be um, very good indeed for that to work. Um, but uh, the, the big question for me is obviously this isn't a one-off set of reforms and the government is uh, obviously thinking of where next. And uh, as I understand it, um, the letter from um, the minister recently to the electoral sector is talking about a number of things that they'd like to see coming soon. Uh, you've already mentioned broadening the accepted list of documentation for yes. both Friday. That's, that's quite an easy one. Um, but giving 16 and 17 year olds the, the right to vote. Um, and then also, uh, again, something that sounds like you know, fairly simple to do, but this plan to improve consistency and accuracy of electoral registers. But giving 16 and 17 year olds the right to vote is quite a biggie because it's not just about saying roll up, roll up. Um, you know, now's your chance to vote. It's about education. It's about understanding. It's about um, driving uh, that need to um, see your vote um, represented in a democratic society. And there's quite a big nut to crack there, I would think, with the uh, the younger generation. But what do you think about the, the next stage of reforms then, Dennis? Well, as you say, Alex Norris has um, given us a clear uh, statement of intent as to what the government intends to do. But the biggie is this thing about giving 16 and 17 year olds uh, the right to vote. I, they're keen to do this, but they're not keen to do it uh, soon. The government say that they know that this represents a significant change to the franchise for reserved elections, and they're determined to get it right. So government intend, they say, this is what Norris says, government intends to work closely with a wide range of stakeholders first to ensure they have a complete understanding of what this might involve. And they want to look at the experience of colleagues in uh, Scotland and Wales, for example, where 16 and 17 year olds already have the right to vote in devolved elections. But one interesting point on the other suggestion that comes from Alex Norris's letter is this. You mentioned this plan to improve consistency and accuracy of electoral registers. Well, the government estimates, you know, Deborah, that there are 8 million people who are either incorrectly registered or missing from the register entirely. That's a large number of people. That's huge. It yeah. is absolutely huge. And the government are determined as they say, committed to taking action to improve the rates of electoral registration. I never realised that the situation was that bad uh, at all, Deborah. No, I didn't, to be honest. I mean, you, you're always aware that people move house and uh, all of that sort of thing, but that is a huge statistic you, you're looking at there. Mm. Um, and you know, that, that could potentially be 8 million people who can't vote or could vote twice under the digital system. <laughs> yes. um, so, you know, back to the fact that you know, neither way is that going to be um, of assistance. Um, and uh, I know that the government have uh, given pledges that before the end of this parliament, they'll be looking at automatic voter registration and they'll be looking at votes at 16. So some of these things could be coming thick and fast. So I think it's fair to say there's never any rest for anybody who's an electoral officer in local government. Yes. Deborah, I can see another conference coming on on this. Absolutely. Good idea, Dennis. Um, and uh, just on that note, we do have uh, Mark Heath 
talking on oh, um, elections good. and doing a roundup of what's happened and the learning points from the last election at our governance conference, which is in person on the 13th of December and then the second day online on the 17th of December. So roll up, roll up and hear Indeed. more. Indeed. Let's get his views on all of this. Absolutely. I bet they'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dennis, that's been um, really informative. So thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Thank you. Bye now.